I recently received this Fightbox F1 PS5 controller, so let's check out this thing together. I wasn't overly familiar with the Fightbox, but just to address the elephant in the room, they have clearly drawn some inspiration from the Hitbox company in regard to their branding and overall aesthetics, though they have been producing their own game-related products since 2015. Anyway, the package spent 16 days in transit, making the long trip to the US all the way from China, and everything arrived safely with no issue. When I started looking into this, I was pleasantly surprised to see that they were using Sanwa buttons for everything but the aux functions, plus a genuine Brook PCB. I requested a unit with all black buttons and PS5 compatibility, and on both fronts they delivered. The enclosure is a combination of metal and acrylic, with plenty of internal space for the components, so this is what the buttons sound like. These aux ones are a different brand, which is a bit stiffer and more clicky than the Sanwa action button. It has a simple rectangular enclosure and clocks in a bit smaller than the official Hitbox. Fightbox also chose to orient their center on the light action buttons, whereas Hitbox orients the center of their devices on the jump function. If you want just a slightly smaller controller without making the full leap to the M press or the micro, the size of this may appeal to you. The Fightbox F1 PS5 has six little feet to keep it stable during table play. You need to remove these to get access to the rivets in order to remove the top panel. The wiring looks fine. Fightbox slightly bends their prongs to keep the case thin, whereas Hitbox has their terminals connect to the wiring at a 90 degree angle to achieve their low profile. Like I mentioned earlier, I was really excited to see genuine Brook products utilized here. Brook boards at the time of this video have some of the lowest latency among the PCB options. Not to mention with the addition of that little daughter board upgrade, this unit is compatible with PS5 play, which is a tall order for many stickless builds. But I wanted to test it out across a variety of systems just to make sure I didn't find any issues. It worked flawlessly on PS4, PS5, and PC. One of the concerns I had with this device was brought on by the recent Capcom CPT rule changes regarding all button controllers, so I had to ask the company about their stance. Because Fightbox uses Brook PCBs, there is already a compatible firmware update, which will make them compliant. I downloaded the firmware and tested to be sure, and everything felt good. In conclusion, these are solid little controllers and much better than I had expected. I think these Fightbox designs would benefit at least aesthetically from a bit more of their own flavor, but they did get several things right, most notably the price. The official Hitbox, which doesn't play on PS5, actually costs $10 more than this Fightbox version right here that does. If you have moved on to current gen hardware, then this is a tough price point to beat if you want to bring an all button controller along. Fightbox also offers several different button variations, including the Shiokan Star 30mm action buttons for players who prefer that. Thanks to Fightbox for sending me a version of their controller to review. If you like the showcase, how about you hit that like button? If you are interested in buying one for yourself, I'll leave their website in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.